Epidermolysis bullosa is a genetic skin condition that causes the skin to blister and tear at the slightest touch. People living with it are in constant debilitating pain and in some cases it can be fatal. Deborah, the Butterfly Skin Charity, want to increase the awareness of the condition and the daily challenges faced by those living with it and that with support there could be some hope on the horizon. Simon Weston, president of Deborah and Deborah ambassador, academic and model Lucy Bell Lott, who lives with recessive dystrophic EB, both join me now. Thanks so much for joining me. Lucy, you have EB. For people like me who don't know much about it, explain to us what it is. EB is a very, very rare genetic condition that's caused by a lack of the protein collagen 7, which is the anchoring fibre that connects your top layer of skin to your bottom layer of skin. Yeah. Without this connecting fibre, your skin is fragile. So instead of me falling down and getting a bruise, I would fall down and get an open wound or a blister similar to a third degree burn. And because the skin is fragile, if we do develop these blisters, there is nothing to keep those blisters in place, which means they can grow and grow and grow until it covers your whole body. So we have to treat the wounds and we have to treat these blisters. And the other thing about EB is that it is not just a skin condition. It affects every internal surface. It affects your eyes, your mouth, your throat. For me, my throat is very involved. So between the ages of 12 and 17, I had almost a dozen surgeries on my throat alone. And it's not just physical as well, because presumably it has an impact psychologically as well, would it? Absolutely. So living with a condition this severe, it can be, it can feel like drowning sometimes because you cannot plan for the future very effectively. You have to plan for the second, for the minute, for the hour, for the day. You have to take each day as it comes and see what that day has ahead of you, which can make it very, very difficult to plan or hope for the future. Whenever I was born in 1998 in Texas, they didn't know anything about EB, and my mom was given absolutely no treatment recommendations and was in fact told that I might not make it past infancy. And then whenever I kept growing, she was told I wouldn't make it past 18, but here I am at 24. So one of the things that Deborah does and does so well is how much they care about our daily lives mm -hmm. and what they can do for us in, in the moment. Simon, how are Deborah supporting people like Lucy who are affected by EB? It's about information a lot of the time. Her mum could access none. Um, so now we have Deborah, and Deborah is spread all over the world. Um, and Deborah is, is specialising in making sure people have the right access to the right type of information to support them so families then know what's to come. They know how to deal with it and who to contact. But we did in the early days, we were very heavily involved in helping train nurses. Now the NHS has taken that on, yeah. um, which helps us tremendously. But now we have to look to the future and see what we can make a difference in there. Yes, and I know you've got a campaign called A Life Free of Pain. So what is the ambition? What we are trying to do is to get, raise five million pounds this year, because if we can do that, we can get different drugs that are already on the market which are being used for dermatitis, eczema, and re-engineer them so that they can make a difference in the healing process. And we're trying to cure the pain and the itch as well, because when people get sunburned, to be quite trite about this type mm -hmm. of condition, you know what the itch is when you get over sunburned and you get blistered and it dries out and the itch, well, if they scratch, they tear. And that then just starts the cycle all over again. So we're trying to get to the point where we can re-engineer the current available drugs because it takes so long and so much money to create new drugs. This is just a way of shortcutting it to the point where we can actually make a difference for the, the people. Um, and it's not just Lucy, it's the families mm -hmm. because they all go through it together. You know, and the siblings really do go through it because a lot of the time they can be sidelined. So mm. there's, a, there's an awful lot to it and a lot more than people might just imagine. And just really briefly, Lucy, as well, um, what to, would you, you, you're very well known in this space and you do a lot to raise awareness, but people who might judge you because something that you could do nothing about, what would your message be? It's okay to notice things that look different from what we're used to seeing and it's okay to be curious, but what you do with this curiosity is what matters. I would much prefer someone start a conversation with me, then talk about me or point at me or stare at me or something like that. 
because whenever we have these important conversations and we see more people who look like me, it becomes less and less different and less and less othering. It's been so good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for coming and joining us today. Thank you both.